the housing affordability crisis lingers in this country, Zillow is stepping in to help that situation and to help first time home buyers achieve the goal of home ownership. It was just in the news in the past week that Zillow is rolling out a 1% down payment mortgage program to help people be able to afford to buy a home. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Will this solve the affordability crisis or is this going to be a nail in the coffin for the housing market and eventually? cause a crash because people aren't going to be able to afford the higher payments because when you have a lower down payment, you have to borrow more money, which is it going to be? I'm going to unpack this program for you today. I'm going to tell you exactly the details of it. And of course, I'm going to share with you my opinion because you know, my love hate for Zillow right now. And I, can, I just can't hold back. So let's get started with interest rates over 7%. So as of today, actually, it's today, September 4th, the day I'm recording this, interest rates for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 7.62%. They're getting up there towards 8%, guys. It's not a good scenario. Being able to afford a home these days, it's, it's becoming next to impossible for a lot of people. So our friends at Zillow think that they can just step right in and say, hey, let's help solve this problem and create a 1% down payment mortgage. That's great, but take a step back and remember, Zillow is a business. And in the second quarter of this year, Zillow reported a $35 million net loss. Now, who remembers their iBuyer program that they actually failed at and they closed up that shop last year? You know, the iBuyer program where you're able to submit your photos of your home, Zillow would make you an offer, they'd buy it from you, and only to turn around to fix that home up to then turn around and sell it on the open market. Well, yeah, that didn't work out so well for them. So now they're dabbling into the mortgage business and with the hopes to tie in connecting you with a real estate agent and helping you get your loan through Zillow. This is the model that they are going for right now to, I guess, to try and like recoup those losses that they lost from the iBuyer program. So keep that in mind. That's This is why they're branching out into the mortgage business because the iBuyer portion failed for them last year. I digress just, just a little bit. Sorry, just had to throw that little dig in there. But let's take a look at this 1% down payment mortgage program. And is it really worth it? Is this really a good program for you to take advantage of? And by the way, as always, feel free to comment. I love reading your comments. I love engaging in the conversation with you. Again, be nice. Please be nice. You know how I am. I don't want to hear any negative. I don't want to hear you coming at me. And, and let's not get political. For God's sakes, let's not do that. So here is what the program looks like. So it is a down payment assistance program. So the borrower is going to put down 1% and Zillow is going to kick in the other 2% from a grant. And that 2% will come at closing. It's not a payment to the borrower. Okay. So once they come to closing, Zillow is going to kick in that other 2%. Okay. So to make it a full 3% down on the loan. Now this is only for eligible First time home buyers. So if you're a second home buyer, if you're looking to buy a second home, or if you sold a home, you want to buy another home, you're out on this one. You have to be a first time home buyer. Now you do have the option to put between one to 3% down. And right now this is only available in Arizona. This is the first state they're rolling it out in. They do hope to expand to other states. When, I don't know. I don't know the timeline for that. But as of right now, this is only available in Arizona. Now there are requirements to be able to qualify for this program. Borrowers must be first time home buyers, as I already said. You have to complete a home ownership education course and you must intend to occupy the property as your primary residence. You also need to have a minimum FICO score of 620. Another requirement is you have to have an income of 80% of the area median income where that property is located that you're going to purchase. And of course, you're gonna to have to pay private mortgage insurance on top of your regular monthly mortgage payment. So remember, anything under 20% down payment, you have to have PMI or private mortgage insurance. Zillow isn't the only one that's offering these low down payment programs. So you have companies like Rocket Mortgage, Guaranteed Rate, or otherwise known as G-Rate, United Wholesale Mortgage, Guild Mortgage, they're all offering these 2% down payment mortgages. I understand 
understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to help people get into a home faster without having to put a lot of money down. So here's a breakdown of, of what the Zillow analysts came up with when they came up with this program. So if you have a home buyer that's looking to buy a $275,000 home in Arizona, and they make the 80% of the AMI in that area where they're buying the home, and if they save just 5% of their income for the down payment, it's only going to take them 11 months to save that 1% down. Now, by comparison, that same buyer, if they wanted to save the 3% down payment, it's going to take them 31 months to finally save that 3% down payment. You see the whole logic behind there. They want you to be able to get into a home faster so you can get that money saved up in 11 months versus 31 months. Now, as I said in the very beginning, like this could be a problem if a lot of people take advantage of these mortgages. Why? Because you're borrowing so much money. By only putting 1% down, your monthly payments are going to be really high. You have to make sure you're going to be able to make that monthly payment. Plus, you're going to want to have money left over at the end of the month to be able to save. Here are the pros and cons of this 1% down payment mortgage. The pros are you're able to purchase a home faster. Okay. Cutting, as I mentioned before, you're cutting down on the amount of time you need to save for that down payment. You won't have to deplete your savings. So you have some money left over to cover your closing costs and any other expenses. And buying a home sooner means you're just building equity faster. So you're not renting anymore. Okay, so I get that. That's a good thing too. But the cons, this is important. Again, the larger loan amount means you're going to have higher monthly payments. You also have the risk of negative equity. So if you buy that house and soon after home values drop in that area for whatever reason, you're now going to be underwater on your loan. You're going to end up owing more than what the home is worth. The other con is you got to pay your private mortgage insurance, like I said before. So figure tack on maybe another hundred dollars or so. I'm not really sure. You have to talk to the your loan originator about that, what that PMI is going to look like. Expect to pay that for about 15 years into the loan or unless you double up on your mortgage payments, then you could probably knock that out a lot sooner. Will these loans be the cause of the foreclosures like what we had back in the housing crash in 08? Is this going to be the nail in the coffin for the housing market? Some experts are fearing that these loans could potentially be a problem and people are going to default on them. However, now keep in mind the subprime loan crisis that we had back in 06, 07, and in the crash in 08, that was based on credit scores. Okay. So people with really low credit scores were we're getting approved for loans. That's not the case here anymore. Now we do have stricter guidelines, underwriting guidelines. This loan in particular is requiring a minimum FICO score of 620. And an FHA loan, you only need a 580 credit score. So, but a 620 credit score is the minimum requirement. So you don't have that issue to deal with. However, when you're putting only 1% down, you don't have a heck of a lot of equity in the home, especially right off the bat. Like I mentioned earlier is one of the cons. So if the home values drop, you are soon going to be underwater. You're going to be underwater pretty darn quick if those values drop in your area where you purchase. So there is the problem first off right there is that you are running that risk. The other thing is when you have higher monthly payments and God forbid there is going to be an economic downturn and there's going to be job losses. Now you're stuck with this high mortgage payment. Look, I'm very conservative when it comes to when it comes to money and I always want to be prepared and I don't want to overspend and I don't want to go beyond my means. Make sure you are able to afford this monthly payment plus have money at the end of the month in your bank account. Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck, paying off this mortgage, it's not worth it. It's not worth it in my opinion. Now, I don't think these loans would actually cause a crash like they did in 08. Now, remember back in that time between 06 and 08, there were 12 million subprime loans. Do I think Zillow is going to be able to get like 12 million of these loans out there? It's possible, but I don't know what people are going to want to take that risk. I mean, we're still kind of in shell shock from what happened in 08 and we don't want to be in that position. Again, I appreciate what they're trying to do and trying to help people to be able to afford a home, but got to be really responsible about this. One thing that sticks out to me that, that worries me with these loans if people take advantage of this. Now we're still in a seller's market. And I'm going to be honest with you in the last two years with me selling the amount of homes that I've sold, I will tell you anybody that put down less than 20% in a bidding war 
you weren't getting that house. So my concern is, is if you're going to use this 1% down payment and you're competing up against other buyers, because in some markets it's still happening. Has it slowed down? Absolutely. But if interest rates come back down, you're going to be bringing more buyers back in, more competition, and we're back to those bidding wars again. And again, driving the prices back up and here we go again. So if you're going to be competing against other buyers, you putting 1% down versus somebody putting 20% down, your chances of actually getting that home are like next to nothing. What? And I hate to say that, but it's the God's honest truth. Here in New Jersey, that is what I experienced. Anytime I had somebody that was going in with less than 20%, seller didn't even want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> It's horrible to say, but it's the truth. This is what went on. So my fear is that in those competitive markets, if you're going to use this loan, it's going to be more difficult for you to win a bidding war. Thanks for the heads up. If you're in a market where the prices are coming down, things are slowing down, I don't see that as being an issue. Even with people putting 3% down, when we were in a normal market and I had people using FHA loans and putting 3% down, 5% down, it was a non-issue. But 1%, I think that's going to scare a lot of sellers and they're not even going to want to look at you if you're going to be competing with other buyers who have more money to put down. Because at the end of the day, the more money you put down, it's showing the seller that you have skin in the game and that you're serious. Look, I'm not saying you're you're not a serious buyer by putting only 1% down, but that's the reality. And that's the mindset of a lot of these sellers in this market. That's a concern for me right there, that people who are going to use these loans, it's going to be hard for them to compete. <sighs> Overall, I don't know if I really like this loan at all, I'll be honest with you. I appreciate they're trying to help the affordability. And again, you know how I feel about Zillow. They're trying to get into the mortgage business. And I think this is their way to try to weasel their way in there by offering this program. I don't know if it's going to work out for them. I don't know. And I'll be honest, I don't know if I would ever recommend this program for people just because of the risk of the higher monthly payments, the risk of the equity. I'm very conservative. You never know what's going to happen, such as a job loss an illness where you're going to have all of a sudden these extra medical bills coming up. Believe me, you got to be on the conservative side. I totally agree. So let's say it's only going to take you 11 months to save 1% down versus 31 months to save 3% down. My suggestion is I would take the time, take the 31 months and save the 3% or even more. If you have time, you don't need to buy that house by next year. Take your time, save your money. Just save the money because it's so worth it in the end. You won't have that stress of that high mortgage payment sitting on your head every month and worrying whether or not you're going to be able to make it. It's, God forbid you have some other emergency that's going to require you know more money out of your bank account and it's going to be hard for you to make that mortgage payment. My best advice to you all is to do your due diligence, work with a loan officer who can walk you through the process, hold your hand and guide you to the best fit for you to make sure you are taking on a mortgage that you can not only afford, but you can live comfortably with. And if you want to get even more educated about buying a home, check out this video right over here. You're going to learn a lot from this one. Thank you so much for watching me today to get your dose of real estate reality. My name is Jackie Baker, and I will see you next time.